So it's Monday, bank holiday Monday. I'm not doing a milk run because I did that the day before yesterday. Um, but I'm heading out for a drive because the car is clean. Um, and I just thought I'd enjoy the sunshine. It's bitterly cold, but I thought I'd enjoy the sunshine. Um, the one thing that as soon as I got in, I started driving and I thought, I haven't done anything about that squeak again. Because I forgot all about it once I, um, once I got in the house. Uh, but the car is clean. I'm really happy. Um, it's all the muck has come off. Uh, power washing has been really good. Uh, a few people have said you probably shouldn't power wash it, but my power washer isn't very powerful, and my car isn't pristine, and it's made the world of difference. Um, unfortunately, I did discover a tiny bit of rust coming through just above the rear bumper by the back light on the rear quarter. Um, it's probably where all the muck gathers underneath. I might just squirt it with a bit of wax oil, but I'm going to leave it looking like it is. It's patina, I guess. The car's 23 years old now, so uh, yeah, it, it's not worth getting fixed. But um, other than that, I've also put everything back in the in the fruit. The fr I don't think that's going to catch on. Fruit. Front boot. Fruit. Um, the frunk. The front boot fruit yeah i don't know i'll give it another go but i'm not sure uh, so that's all good um i need to do a couple of things on the 912 which are again it's that it's that front i need to get the front at a good height just so i can then look at it and go that looks about right and then do and then just take it somewhere and say can you do the wheel alignment um, and I, I'll feel much better about it. I hope I won't get bump steer and things like that where I have to put some kit, uh, something on it. Um, and I know I'm bump jumping topic to topic. I'm actually quite high on the sugar from Easter eggs, so I can't really concentrate. I thought, should I put a short shift uh, kit on, on this car? Because it, it's quite notchy, the gear change, and I, do, I don't think, my, I would like my wife to be able to drive it. She's totally not interested in it but if I ever went out with my children somewhere in our other car then she might want to oh, get around a cyclist she might need to go out in this car so that would be ideal but um, but that again nothing urgent that's fine um, now the thing I wanted to talk about is that a few people have asked me mostly people have DM me on um, Instagram uh, asking about well two people said did I regret buying my 912 because I don't use it as much and I bought it I've had it now or oh, since August um, so September October November December January February March well if you go if you include April it's uh, eight months but it was at Jack's for a few weeks probably what felt like a couple of months so I don't think I got it back until the end of October and I only drove it about twice before the weather turned and I just put it away. But I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. Um, but what I regret is not being able to use it as much or tinker with it as much. I don't really, I'm not, like I said in the last video, I'm not really much of a wrencher anymore. So before I would just give anything, give anything a go. But at the moment, um, you know, I've got small children. I've got a quite full on job. The stuff to manage at home so you can't just take your time treat it as some kind of therapy um, and have that satisfaction of doing something that you did your best to your, the best of your ability because um, most of the time you're just rushing it and I kind of felt that when I was lowering the rear of the 912 uh, but I was satisfied that I didn't cut any corners um, I just tried to do things quickly because I could do it in that afternoon. Uh, so that was done. Obviously the toe and the camber on both the wheels is out. And, and not only that, when you just look at the wheels on either side, they don't match the camber and the toe. On the driver's side, there's toe in and uh, negative camber. Whereas on uh, the driver's side, doesn't appear to be any visible toe in and there's a small bit of camber. So I, I need to get that done very quickly but I need to lower the front first so I can then just take it and get everything done um, so no I don't I don't regret it um, but also people have said well for the money that I paid 
I could have bought um, a 930 or which you know 930s I think are going to have their moment uh, because people are starting to look at them buy them they're uh, modern-ish in terms of reliability driving some of them came galvanized now I know that was you know 30 plus year, 35 years ago a lot of them 40 years ago a lot of them um, so the fact that they were galvanized doesn't mean that they were they're still rust proof but what it does what it does mean is that there'll be a more limited amount of rust maybe I'm just speculating here I don't know but you know compared to a 60s or 70s uh, car but I think it was in the mid 80s they were galvanized I might, I might be making that up um, so uh, 60s, 70s, you know, in the, being used in the UK, they'd be rusted. And, and the other benefit of having those, apart from being more modern, more reliable, um, probably better handling, um, the other benefit would be I would be more likely to be able to get a hold of one of those in right-hand drive. Um, so the... And, you know, people are buying the 930s and, and there's people, you know, uh, Magnus Walk has talked about them for a while. TGE TV, he's bought one. Um, so people are going to start saying, well, actually, this is the next big thing. And it probably is because they're still great cars to drive. It's still air-cooled. Um, I don't think they're as nice looking, which is why people sort of uh, backdate them. Um, but then, you know, I was asked, I think it was EA Games... Have I got that right? On um, on YouTube said to me, well, what about a 964, a 930, or even a 993? Now, when I think about those... Um, well, hang on, let me get out of this junction first, because I can't turn around. Here we go. Right. Um, but about... An, an, 930, 964, 930. So when I bought my 912, and I, you know, eight months ago isn't that long ago, but when you think about the prices, they've changed quite a lot. I could have got for fifty thousand pounds a 964 manual right-hand drive with um, uh, I, I saw a Targa for that much. Really nice looking one. It had Fuchs wheels with the polished uh, spokes, and it looked fantastic. But 50,000 from 30,000 is quite a lot, uh, quite a big difference, and it's a different car. And one of the drivers for me buying the 912 was I wanted that look, I wanted that 60s look, uh, the original uncluttered shape with the small bumpers um, and the clean look. And the 930 wouldn't have given me that, the 964 wouldn't have given me that, the 993 definitely wouldn't have given me that. And um, I mean, just a few days ago, I think, uh, JMs did a video on the 993 and how it's a great car. But again, Porsche did that thing where they said, oh, look at how we've redeveloped it. But it wasn't that redeveloped. Okay, look more modern, but that, but that was about it. It was still an evolution of the, um, of the 964 and of the 930 before it. So, you know, to say that it was different, you know, you just have to look at the interior. And so I didn't, um, so I don't regret buying my 912 because I wanted that look. And if I'd gone for a 911 of that period, you know, before 1970, and then I would have paid a, probably more money and probably a car that didn't drive. So I'd have to get a load of welding done, probably an engine rebuild, suspension, maybe some interior. Um, or I could have paid about the same and then spent another £20,000. Again, you're at that 50000 mark. I don't mind patina. I don't mind a slightly tassy interior. Uh, but, you know, if brakes, suspension and engine gearbox all, are all okay, then you're kind of winning. Because you know, patina adds, uh, for some people, to how it looks and the story of the car. And I don't mind that. I don't like the fake stuff, obviously. Um, but and I don't really want patina on this car because I don't think Felix old enough to have that kind of patina but I still feel that it should just wear its age so yeah in conclusion um, I don't regret getting my 912 I wanted that 
Um, I wanted that and I wanted that uh, car of that era. And the reason I went for the 912 was because basically I couldn't afford a 911. A box had a 911, 911 T, a 911 E, a 911 S. I couldn't afford any of those. Um, so I just went for that. And you know, a, a, a two liter, um, a, a two liter mechanically fuel injected engine would have been brilliant. Um, and I thought about, I really thought about buying one for about 5,000 pounds, getting that engine going, because then none of them come with a guarantee at that, at that price. Um, and then putting it into the 912. But then when I drive it, I think, do I need any more performance? What I would like is a better sound, which is why I'm going for the Dance exhaust. And the thing that I've got now is, well, if you go and buy it from Design 911, like Nick from the Classic Series did, um, he bought the mild steel one where it came with the, t the tailpipes and the clamps that fit those on. Um, but if you look at the stainless steel one, it's about 100 and something, 130, 100, maybe even 150 pounds more, but it doesn't come with those tailpipes. And can I reuse my pipe that comes out the one side because both of those tailpipes feed into the one? Could I reuse that? Does that affect the sound? I don't know. Um, and also I was thinking about spaces. Um, I wanted to get it all in one order from Design 911. So I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit confused at the moment, but what I do need to do is do the things that I can do, which is the stance. That's the number one thing. Um, and it's just a bit of a ball ache. I'm back at work tomorrow. So I've had this four day period of almost bliss where I'm hanging out with my family. Uh, I managed to wash this car. I managed to do the suspension on the other one. Um, I managed to make three videos, including this one. Uh, edit them, upload them. Well, actually, I haven't edit, edited this one or uploaded it, which I will try to do later. So it's been it's been this kind of little um, sort of I can't. Oh, how do I describe it? Not light relief. That makes it sound like a comedic moment, but more. Um, downtime hang on uh, a bit of downtime that's really given me a bit of headspace to think and do things whereas um, during the week when I'm working I don't have that I can't just go oh I'll do I'll do half an hour or I'll do an hour of something on the car or uh, oh I'm working 12 hours on such and such day I'll take two hours in the middle of the day and I'll go and do the front suspension it wouldn't actually take two hours I could just do it in one hour, just literally pop out of where I'm sat working, stick my overalls on, slide under the car, adjust it, try and get it to the right height, and that's it, get back to work. I'd probably be able to do that in sort of an hour. Um, and then just drive to the nearest um, wheel alignment place, and job's good. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I need to try and build into my day, but it's really difficult. And especially when you get all mucky and you're trying to work or I, I did slip a spanner I think I said that in my last video um, and I hit on my knuckle um, and it's still quite sore when uh, when I was doing lowering the suspension so but at the same time it's massively satisfying uh, I've got to clean the inside of the 912 anyway because after the welding was done there's ash and things flying everywhere uh, <coughs> I want to get some new carpets for it it's got the rubber mats in the middle, which I really don't like. They're kind of, uh, what's the word? It's, it's kind of noisy. It feels kind of, um, I don't know, not comfortable, um, but that's all in my head. I just want to be able to do that, get that done. But it's all money as well. So if I think about exhaust spaces, carpets, that's well over a thousand pounds. That's before I think about the wheels, before I think about uh, a roof rack. I wanted to get the wheel centers for the Fuchs because let's face it, I'm not gonna have, um, I'm not gonna have steel wheels anytime soon unless a set comes up for sale at a bargainous price. Highly unlikely. So I saw some on eBay and they were at, with I think a couple of days to go, they were at 25 pounds. Uh, and I put in a bid of, 98 pounds and they sold for 103 and they look pretty beaten up um, and when you look on 
a design 911 they're they're about i think they're 58 pounds before vat so they you know um they're about 60 70 pounds to buy each so and when you go hang on if i buy the wheel centers for 280 pounds i could get three steel wheels for that much okay it won't have the tires they won't be refurbished that kind of stuff but still it, you know it, when money is isn't um well money is an issue price is an issue you, you're always thinking about well should i buy that to make it look better now but i could buy that to make it look better later um so i'm always having these internal debates I don't, I don't know about anybody else but i have those internal debates about the little things but then when it comes to spending a big amount of money like buying the actual car like buying this car I do move quite quickly because they're the kind of decision that I would stew over and then not do anything about. Whereas those decisions about the little things, they don't really affect my enjoyment of the car from a driving point of view, but they might from how I look at it. Um, and I care less about, I don't know if you've gathered that, about how this car looks. Um, and I do, don't get me wrong, I really like the way it looks now that it's washed. But, um, but it was always about how well does it drive? Is there a problem? Do I need to get that fixed? And I would get that fixed just to, if it was, especially if it was something I found frustrating when it came to driving it. The thing that I'm finding frustrating is that squeaking noise. You probably can't hear it, but it's really annoying. So those are the things that I need to do. Um, and I think this week I need to make a decision. I need to order the exhaust. Um, and if I get the mild steel one, and, and you know when you're not driving the car very much, I think the mild steel one is likely to perish. I don't know. Whereas um, my MG stainless steel exhaust still looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, and that's more than 20 years after I put it on the car. So unlikely that I'll have the 912 for 20 years. Um, but... I think it would be a good thing to do to put that on. So I'm thinking, should I just buy the exhaust and see and stick the single pipe on? Because it's the two that come out of the back. Someone's phoning me. It's my mother. Um, so the single pipe that come, the two pipes that come out of the back of the dance stainless steel exhaust, uh, my one pipe will fit that. And I just wonder if it'll sound different. I don't know because um, then I can just always stick the two pipes on but then it's all complicated and I don't want to spend time doing that kind of thing I want to do it in a one um, so yeah that's a pain so once I've done those things front suspension height wheel alignment exhaust I still haven't done the timing because again it's a time thing once I've done those I'll be a lot happier and I'll be able to just jump in and drive it whenever I want so that's where I'm at uh, thank you to everybody for the questions uh, regarding whether I regretted getting a 912 whether I should have thought about uh, a 964 930 or a 993 uh, again the, the, the bottom line is it was money uh, I didn't have the money I had to borrow the money to buy the 912 anyway um, and thank you to everybody who's watched, who's hit like, who's subscribed, uh, everybody who's um, following on Instagram and everyone who sent the encouraging messages. I really appreciate it and it kind of drives me on because uh, at one point uh, I think I said on a previous video in the dead of winter that I did think, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really doing it justice because I don't get the time to do it all, whereas I feel a lot more positive and enthusiastic about it. A lot of it's probably to do with the weather and the fact that it was an Easter weekend and I wasn't thinking about work. Um, and I felt re less stressed and I've not ranted. Uh, I suspect later on this week I will do a video where I'm out on the milk run and I'm having a rant about the world because it's snowing, it's raining, it's cold, work is a nightmare. And 
I'd just rather be doing something else. Like driving the car, even tinkering with it. Like I said, I'm no longer a natural wrencher. Um, but I'd be okay if that, if I had the time and I was of independent means. Like Miss Marple. If you ever watch Miss Marple, she's described as a woman of independent means. Why the fourth gear? Yes. Um, she's described as a woman of independent means. I'd like to be a man of independent means. I don't know how that would happen. A lottery win? Uh, five million views on every video? That's not going to happen. But anyway, thank you to everybody for tuning in, for listening, for tolerating my rants and my inane chat and my lack of knowledge. Um, oh, before I finish, I said it at the end, I should have said it at the beginning. Uh, I listened to the Porsche Cold podcast. Steve is back. Great news. Um, he sounded quite refreshed, although he, uh, which is good. And... Um, and it's good to have him back and it was a very very good episode and I had a good old chuckle along to it um, and yeah I'm hoping to do something with Michael and Steve hopefully soon um, I know there's a time difference so and, and Steve obviously has got a new um, addition to his family so he cannot be as flexible which I, can't, I totally get uh, but it's great to have him back and uh, we'll do something soon and uh, thank you to everyone watching subscribing hit like um, providing the feedback messages all of that stuff and tune in there's gonna be more videos coming very soon thank you